In this video, I'll show how I determine the internal layout of a boat. This will be one of the first steps that I'll do. The reason for determining the internal layout early in the build is it sort of sets and establishes the plan for where components will be laid out so you know where to install them. Key considerations will be making sure the components fit inside the boat and to deconflict where certain components are such as where the guns are versus where the CO2 bottle or the motors are uh, and then also I want to determine a layout so that the boat is balanced so that it floats level balanced stern with minimal extra weight uh, at this stage, because it's it's very early in the build, it'll be a preliminary layout, but it'll give you a notional idea of where components can be. So when you finish the boat, it'll be relatively trim fore and aft. Uh, also, determining the layout helps establish where the how the deck pieces will be installed. When I'm Starting internal layout, I usually reference completed boats that I know are balanced well. Uh, in this case, I'll be determining the layout for the Indianapolis, which is a three unit cruiser. So I have the Lutzow here, which is a completed boat that I've battled for a few years as a secondary ship. I've also loaned it out so I know its layout is good and it's sort of battle proven. If I don't have a reference then I'll sort of refer to similar boats that I have or I'll look at how other successful proven builders built their boats and lay out their components. The steps to determine the layout involve taking primary components and sort of test fitting them in the hull and then that'll sort of allow determination of where things can go and what can fit where. Um, to start, some sort of prerequisites is I'll mark the center of flotation uh, with, the, with the line here, which I determined from my float test. This will be the point that I'll want to balance the boat, and if the, the boat balances with its components, about you know within an inch or so of this point then it'll be pretty good um, when the boat is finished when you go to first float test it. Other main thing will be determining where what gun layout you're going to use because you need to know where the guns are so you can deconflict appropriately. So for that I will mark on the hull where the turrets are that I'm going to arm. Uh, in this case the cruiser is very simple just going to have two stern guns. So I just marked the location of the stern turret and that is going to show where the guns are so I know not to put a component directly in that location. I'll open up the lutes out here to show its internal layout as a reference and then in this case because these are both cruisers and you can only really drive one cruiser at a time I'll probably plan to directly transfer um, a lot of the key components from this boat into the Indianapolis. So I'll remove the deck pieces. Main layout, starting from out of stern. Uh, in the very stern, you'll always have rudder servo and the rudder post. Um, you want to think about what ways, how, inter how you're going to connect the rudder servo to the rudder post. Uh, in this case, is a chain. Uh, which is which works well when the stern isn't very high. So the, the stern is not very high. You need to put the servo further forward. So um, using a chain is a pretty good way to do that. Other ways um, you can use a push pull or my other standard mount will be using gears. And then sometimes I'll put like an idler gear in there. 
So the rudder servo will be the aftmost portion. And then for both the stern guns, you can see here sort of how this lines up. There's um, a sort of recess for where the guns stick down. So you can see the gun tees right there. So I want to make sure there's room for those T's not to interfere. So like if the I try to put the guns like right on top of motors, they wouldn't fit right. They're running into each other. Um, but leaving that space ensures sea confliction. Uh, then will typically be the motors, and you know whether the motors are in front of or behind the gun location is going to depend a lot on the specifics of the boat and the armament. Uh, but in this case for the Lutau, and then also for the Indianapolis, the motors will be forward of the um, of the guns. Um, and then usually forward of the motors, or sometimes between the motors, depending on how wide the ship is, will be the pump. So you want to plan for that location. It's a cruiser, so there's a pretty small pump. Um, you also want to Think about where your pump tube is going to go, so it sort of deconflicts and can get out of the boat. Um, moving forward, in this case, I have the solenoids right there. So uh, the solenoids are for firing the guns. In this cruiser, they were fairly far forward for aft guns on a larger ship. Um, like to keep the solenoids as close to the actual guns as possible for the shortest hose length. Um, but this sort of middle section is where you'll see the most variation between different boats. Um, main things to fit in will be solenoids, uh, also speed controls, receiver, so that's a speed control. There's a multi-board in here and the receiver, uh, also test switches. And then you'll have batteries, one or more, and then CO2 bottle. Um, with something like a cruiser, it's fairly narrow, so the components are more end-to-end, -end, where in this case we have solenoids, then ESCs, then battery, then bottle. Um, on some larger boats that have more beam, you'll see typically more of a nested arrangement where you might have the bottle or the batteries out to either side and the bottle between or something like that. Alright, so this is sort of a reference. So now what I'll do is I'll take um, sort of dummy components and I'll stick them in the hull and then just sort of show how um, I'd go about deconflicting the components and uh, checking the balance. I put in some mock components in the hull to just sort of see how things line up. So like I mentioned before, the um, aftmost portion would be a rudder servo. Um, so things I'm looking for here with the rudder servo are mainly the height of the deck, basically like how much room there is. In this case, um, there's there's some room there, but it's going to be pretty tight. Uh, so generally, you know, I'll need to sort of pay attention to um, how much how much space there is. Um, but it looks like the servo should be able to go back here, and I don't need to worry too much about it conflicting with the the turret. Uh, so moving forward. Sort of because this turret is very far aft, deconfliction isn't a huge problem because it would be pretty unreasonable to try to get the motors um, in that location. So what I'll do is I'll just take a standard magazine, a 50 round magazine, and this gives me a good idea of you know how far forward the magazines will go. And then um, That'll sort of come into effect when I'm deconflicting it with the pump because depending on the number of magazines you have, um, you can either have to curve them around the pump or it could be an issue. Um, 
and then motor wise I'm planning to use 555s which are a pretty big can motor uh, a 380 motor could be used but it would sort of be pushing the limit on about the size of an Indianapolis if it was a smaller cruiser uh, like Fiji or something that's sort of borderline and you can try 380s um, but with this, you know, it's pretty good to just see really how big they are. Um, factors on where the motors go. I'm mainly looking at the how the hull is curved at the bottom. So generally, you want the motors um, to be as low as possible, especially in a cruiser, because cruisers are very stable. So if I had the motors like more outboard, they're um, would sort of be raised up a bit. Um, so I will sort of, you know, plan them to be here-ish, and then I'll need to check when I go to install the props. You want to check the prop shaft angle to see and make sure it's not going to be too steep. Um, after that, I'll plan for a pump. Now this is not the pump I use. This is a battleship pump. Um, but generally the pumps about the same size so plan for the pump to go just for the motors and then I'll plan for solenoids so in this case I have just some loose solenoids that are generally the same size and then I plan to use expansion tanks which are about this size um, and then I'll really end up like I mentioned probably just taking these exact guts from uh, the lutes out here and dropping them in and confirming they fit. But if I didn't have a boat, you know, I'd be doing a more of this random component style. Um, things I want to consider is I might need to try to get the battery between these. Um, so, because moving forward with a five ounce bottle you can sort of see, you know, how far forward it, you could possibly go. So it's it's sort of constrained by the hull here. Uh, this boat has a very narrow bow, so this area in the front is kind of um, can't be used for anything. Um, but in general, it looks like this this layout should be good. So next step is you know, with these major components, I'll try to do like a very rough, very rough balance just to check it out. When determining balance, you want to make sure you have the primary components with the largest mass uh, included. So, I already have, I got the rudder servo, I got the motors, I got solenoids, expansion tanks, batteries, uh, CO2. So those are really the big things. Um, and then with the guns, I'll typically put in some weights. Uh, if I had guns made up, I can put them in the hull. But um, weights also are a good representation, so I'll just put them, you know, where the gun lies. Uh, and then I'll sort of take the boat and I'll balance it on a it's a one by two. And then you can sort of see where the one by two is relative to the center flotation. And um, it looks like, you know, it's probably within about a quarter of an inch with this very rough weight distribution. Um, I would say, yeah, it's a, it's about a about a quarter of an inch probably. So, uh, in this case, I would expect it to be a tiny bit bow heavy, but you know, at this stage of the build, it's certainly close enough. Um, other components that aren't really accounted for here would be uh, superstructure, water channeling, um, and then those, you know, will sort of depend on what the boat looks like. You know, for this one, it does have some decent superstructure, both four and a half, so those sort of cancel out. And things like the deck is a sort of even weight, weight distribution across the length. So, Uh, you can see here using my existing boat that's already balanced out, it makes it really easy to assess a new boat.
Um, something like a cruiser, there aren't a ton of components to balance, so it's, um, it's pretty straightforward. Now I'll also show some internal layouts of some other boats just for reference, and then I'll show the same exercise with a, um, a larger capital ship, and you'll see with that it ends up being a fair bit more complex because you have more components, you have more gun locations to populate, and you just have you know more factors to consider. Now I'll show determining the internal layout of a much larger ship, a capital ship in this case, it's the 1920 South Dakota. Uh, this ship is pretty big. It is, uh, I'd say it's very wide, so you have a lot more options. Uh, this is a class six, six and a half unit ship with uh, four turrets, so I've gone and you can sort of faintly see the turret outlines uh, both aft and forward. And then for this ship, I'm going to set it up with uh, triple sterns and then three side mounts and the other three turrets. Other factors that I'm going to plan for are number of pumps, number of batteries, number of bottles. So with a larger ship, there's sort of more, more variables. And then I have basically representative components for each of the major portions that I'll use. Uh, I also have my center flotation marked. Uh, I have this cross member in the hull just because the hull is bowed in a little bit. So it gives a bit better representation of the, uh, the beam. I laid out primary components in the hull. What's really striking with this one is how much the wider beam really allows a lot more options. You can see there's really a ton of room inside here. Um, so starting from the stern, rudder servo, you just see like how small the rudder servo looks in this hull relative to the Indianapolis, so there'll be plenty of room there. Uh, and then moving forward, main thing to deconflict on this hull is going to be where the solenoids versus where the motors are. So there are some options. Um, I have my motors and what the motor mounts look like, so I can sort of take that whole size into perspective. And then what I sort of want to look at is am I able to fit the solenoids sort of directly to the outboards of the guns? Or maybe do I have to put the motors further aft and then the solenoids um, in front of them? So in this case, I think what I'm going to do which doesn't really show well here, is I'm going to stack them. So I'll, I'll sort of stack the solenoids in the accumulation tanks on top of each other. So there's sort of, there's plenty of vertical room there. Uh, and then this will go on top of water channeling, so that's something I want to consider. And then, um, it's sort of hard to, hard to see because the pieces keep falling or rolling in towards the center. But, um, you know, basically have one on one side, two on the other, and then the solenoid for the the side mount in the raised turret will most likely be attached to the deck, just sort of hovering this location. Um, and then, you know, I can just sort of plan for the motors further forward. Uh, the advantage of getting the motors further forward are that'll generally allow for a shallower um, shaft angle. So you can see the hulk sort of curves in as you move aft. So if the motors were you know, like up here, they're starting to go angled, which you could do, but the um, this location, or this, this height right here, basically where the shaft is gonna go, um, it sort of moves up where if I get it to the point where it's level here I'll have um, both it's it's going down and it's going to be further away from where the props are back here so you have a lower angle which is preferred uh, and then sort of moving forward for pumps 
So I only have one pump as a mock-up, but you can see there's, there's a ton of room in this thing, so I'm not really too concerned about it. Uh, in general, I'll have a pump. You know, in this case, it'd be probably more between the motors. Uh, things I want to look out for are where the the turret is, so I don't want to put the pump directly under the turret because that'll conflict most likely. Uh, and then the only other main things to figure out are bottle and batteries. Some plans use six batteries for it because I'm using two pumps. And then with the lipos here their form factor is pretty small. Uh, some other batteries I've used in the past are these Lifey cylinders. So if I use those, they sort of they take up a good bit more more space. So things I could consider, I could certainly consider um, taking the bottle, which I have in the forward, and um, moving it to the middle. So advantages of moving it to the middle are the um, the hose lengths are generally going to be shorter between the bottle and the solenoids uh, so there's less distance or resistance to the uh, CO2 flow um, and then it also if the bottle's in the middle it leaves a bit more room up forward for these two guns um, where they're going to go. But in this case, um, there's there's really plenty of options. Uh, a reason to keep it forward is for um, weight distribution. So because I have these four solenoids, I have four guns, and the accumulation tanks for the triple sterns, you know that's that's a pretty pretty good distance from the center flotation. So if I if you look at like what's forward, you can see I put with stacking the batteries, I'm doing probably two forward instead of the double stack in the middle to sort of help balance that out. And then keeping the bottle up forward will also help balance that. Um, if I put the bottle in the middle, you know, it might be good, but then I'm going to end up putting a bunch of weight forward, which is going to be worse for turning. Uh, if the boat had a more balanced armament with equal number of guns forward and aft, then getting the bottle in the middle would be um, preferred if, if there was if there was space. Alright, uh, so you know with this layout um, other things to highlight are the forward solenoids, so either have those attached to the hull or most likely you'll have them suspended from the deck, but you still want to um, consider where they're going to go. I also want to think about electronics and speed controls. So because this boat is going to use brushless, it's going to need four speed controls. So those, those add up. Uh, in this case, there's plenty of room, so they'll most likely sort of end up in this vicinity. Um, smaller boats, you need to be a bit more deliberate about where you plan to put them because you can run out of real estate. Alright, so now I will um, sort of check my weight distribution. So I got my, my primary components in here. Uh, the superstructure is pretty balanced, four and a half, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and then I'll add in some weights for the guns. Also check magazines. So in this case, because I'm going to have four guns, um, you know, I want to sort of think about where the magazines go and make sure there's, for example, enough clearance around the pump um, and then also over the motors. That, that usually works, um, but some smaller boats, you'll need to think about that more. Okay, I have the hull balanced. You can sort of see where it lies. Probably, I don't know, about an inch and a half forward relative to where it needs to be. But in this case, because the boat is going to be so heavy, I'll need to add more weight um, no matter what. And if you're not really sure, you know, you could sort of, you could play around. So in this case, it's, it's weighted forward, so maybe 
maybe I go and move the batteries here um, to the middle. So let's see what that does. So I move those, get to the middle, and then just sort of see where the balance point is. So like there, in this case, um, that actually that actually would help a, a pretty good bit. Um, you can see it; it's almost spot on. Uh, so those are sort of the the sort of things you could do. Um, could demonstrate sort of the impact of the bottle. So if I pull the bottle out and say I want the middle, like you know, you could see the uh, that would be a, a decent impact. So let's sort of see where the um, the balance point would be. Okay, so you see a bit of a shift. Um, the spot is about right there. So that shifted the balance point about an inch. And there you pretty much have it. Other things I'll do at this point, uh, you could consider weighing the boat, especially if it's a smaller boat where you're worried about the weight margin. So if, for example, you're not sure about how many batteries to use, what size bottle, um, whether or not you can have accumulation tanks, you can weigh the boat just sort of get a general sense. Um, obviously there's a lot more components that aren't included here, so the drivetrain, the drive shafts, the um, rudder, rudder mount, water channeling, deck, superstructure. So you don't really want to be up against your weight limit, but it'll give you a notional idea of you know how many how many batteries you can use, for example. All right, so that is sort of the weight distribution for a larger boat. Give a quick tour of the internal layout of Radetzky. Uh, Radetzky's uh, three and a half unit pre dreadnought. These are pretty good starter boats. Uh, they are certainly on the smaller side, so things are much more constrained on the inside. But it's a good balance with um, two stern guns and then a forward side mount. Uh, they're pretty small maneuverable. Uh, this boat's been battled for a few years now. And I'll just basically show the layout and, and sort of what a, a tighter boat looks like in terms of more restrictive. More restrictive. Alright, so to start, uh, I'll show one feature which is kind of cool in this boat is the gun magazines, I have them all routed to this center location under the uh, one of the stacks here. So this is nice because I use this boat for campaign where you're reloading mid-battle. So it's good to have nice, um, easy access to the fill tubes. Uh, that also allows leaving the aft deck in place when I'm reloading. So in the forward section, you can see the gun and then I do have a under the deck solenoid mount for this. So I wanted to use the bigger tubing, eighth inch internal diameter. Um, but you can see I had to sort of snake the, the magazine around um, just because it's a 75 round magazine. It's sort of, I had to make sure it ended by the end of this deck piece. Um, and then looking on the inside, so here it's another bottle in the bow configuration. And then for this, I have one of those lifey, lifey cylinder cells. These are 10 amp hours. This is 6 volts, 10 amp hours. Um, but it, you can see it sort of is really constrained in there. I um, actually had to cut out some of the deck to be able to put the battery in. So in terms of deconfliction here, I got a 3.5 ounce bottle in the bow with the regulator. Um, then I have the receiver, multi-board, and then the, the solenoid here. The solenoid sort of fits in that little area um, on the port side there. So this one can be pretty tough. And then another big factor for deconfliction is the, um, the T for the gun, because it has to fit beside the bottle. Sort of see see a bit how that um, that goes. Alright, um, moving aft, in this case I have the 
pump between the motors so you can see there's there's very little space there to fit um, and then with the gearboxes here they take up a good amount of space and then I have the aft solenoids with uh, accumulation tanks and check valves in the outboards there so you can sort of see that deconfliction and then I have the two aft guns um, so you can see the T's and then you can see here when I was um, making them I drew pretty much where the pump was going to be so they could deconflict uh, and then moving aft I have the servo, rudder servo in this case it has uh, side by side rudders so you can see that as well um, with the water channeling I want to deconflict where the gun tees come down make sure they're not running into it uh, so for this boat it's it's a really really tight build and this is you know a bit more representative of uh, how challenging the internal layout can be on a smaller boat so if it's if it's a smaller boat where you got especially one that has this is heavily armed for its size um, it can be more constraining to uh, to fit everything in um, other factors in this one are the um, the cross member locations so you can see I put one um, right behind the guns and this other one midships which really isn't ideal but that allows the, the two deck pieces and then it also I had to consider like where the magazines were because um, I didn't want the magazines sort of running into it all right that is a tour of the layout of a smaller pre-dreadnought. Uh, for the last boat of this video, I'll show layout of Congo. Uh, this is a completed, battle-tested capital ship. Um, four guns, four side mounts. Uh, in a single battle, I can only arm three of them. But um, with that number of guns, it makes it it's easier just to install the guns and solenoids, so I can quickly shift between the two. All right, open it up. Okay, uh, so this one in the bow, I have seven ounce bottle. Uh, the red goes right here. Uh, the guns on this one are sort of sort of interesting. So uh, you can see. Reloading, I have the um, the fill caps right here, so I can refill it from outside the deck, uh, which is nice. But that makes it you know a bit complex here with one magazine wrapping around the other one. Um, and then also you can see two under deck solenoids with the larger tube, and then sort of how it ties in um, from the rest of the boat. Uh, for this one, I, I have a waterproof box in it for now. Um, these are not used very often anymore. So I'll actually be taking this out in the next refit this winter. Um, sort of reason to take it out is, it, is they take up a lot of space. So this takes up a pretty, pretty good chunk right here. Uh, and then moving aft, I have locations for batteries. So I'll use, I'll use uh, lipos here room for two double stacks and then plug it into a bus bar. Uh, moving aft, so for this one I have under deck solenoids as well. You can sort of uh, see here they're a horizontal mount and then the magazines it was easier to just route them to the opposite turrets. Congo is a bit unique with the um, aft turret spread out that far but it allows using the big tube uh, which is nice. Okay and then in this one you know you can sort of see the motors are really far forward um, and that's really driven by wanting to get the solenoids under the deck 
and then the rudder servo what's interesting is how tight it is back here with um, side by side rudders I had to use these these tiny gears which is not good from a servo stress standpoint so I have to use a high torque servo here uh, and then pump is not installed but pump goes right here and then the tube routes her out and, and comes out here. Um, for this one, there is certainly some deconfliction with um, where the pump goes in, where the motors are. So you can see like this tube, it's at an angle to sort of fit around the corner of the gearbox. Um, and then the pump ESC would go right about here and then it has to be level enough to go under the marker or the sunlight holder. So that's Congo. Uh, other things, the bow, the bow is really narrow so the bottle goes to about here. So there's a good bit of the bow that's, that's not usable. Uh, other possible arrangements for this would be to try to get the bottle between the batteries but um, the beam isn't quite enough to do that. Uh, in general, this is a pretty clean boat um, with just the four guns for the length. But this should hopefully give an idea of what a, uh, a capital ship internal layout would look like completed. Alright, I'll wrap it up for this video. So I showed determining the internal layout. Uh, this is one of the first steps because it sets decisions for the next step of installing the drivetrain and then uh, you know later steps in terms of where different mounts need to go. Before you do this you'd want to understand what your major components are so you'd want to for the drivetrain you'd want to understand what motor you're using what size motor and whether you're using geared or direct drive you want to determine the number of pumps uh, you want to determine the gun placement so you can deconflict and place the solenoids appropriately. You want to determine what batteries you're going to use because those are a pretty big component. You want to determine the bottle size, which regular you're going to use so you know where to place it. And then for a smaller boat that might be more constrained, you'll certainly want to think about the electronics. Um, when you're doing this step, main things are one, just deconfliction of components. So don't put a major component under a gun is, is one of the, the big factors. And then also ensuring there is some sort of balance. So checking that the weight distribution is relatively balanced. So when you build the boat and install all these things, when you go to test it out, you know, um, the balance will be will be close and within adjusting with with just some trim weights. Uh, one other thing I can sort of quickly show is is for guns I use straight magazines um, in my guns or I'll sort of curve them to deconflict our components. Another common type of um, magazine is like the coil gun so I use these starting out but sort of be big consideration if you are using these are they they take up a good bit more volume. So for example, like if I tried to use one of these for the bow side mount here, it pretty much wouldn't work. It'd be, um, it'd be very close with, with the bottle, uh, which is one of the reasons why deciding, you know, what magazines you're going to use, what guns you're going to use, um, is important. And then also as a other aside, just, a reason why using a straight or custom made gun are, um, makes it easier to uh, deconflict the internals. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.